they were uh, I, somebody I loved. I had pushed to get them on. That's one of the bands I had definitely pushed to get them on. I think the record companies were probably pushing. In those days, you know, the record companies would also be bombarding the show because it was where you could showcase a new act or an act that had a record coming out. And uh, they came on. Now, I'm not talking out of school when I say they were known as a drinking band. And on Thursday, they had kept their, themselves together pretty good at camera blocking. They, they were, were another band that was not happy about having to play the song several times in a row. But they, Paul Westerberg is enough of a pro that he got them through it. I love his writing. I love their songs, the sound of that band. And Saturday, they did the, the dress rehearsal and it was okay. But when it got to the air show, by then it had been too long in the dressing room and too much beer. And uh, the guitar player actually fell down on the way out to the stage and fell on his guitar and broke his guitar. And I think I gave him one of mine to play or something. There was a guitar that was around and we gave it to him to play and he played on that. And they still sounded great because they were used to playing that sloppy drunk. You know, they were used to that. So they were fine. But uh, there were some scary moments before yeah. some of the guest bands got on. <laughs> Because you'd get Shane McGowan, or you'd get the Pogues, or the uh, replacements, or people like that. And it could be uh, a great story. Brian Ferry, who had been in the band Roxy Music, the English singer. And he was on. And uh, I had put together a really special band for him, because he has a certain sound. It's this very lush. It's still a rock and roll band, but it's lush. Yeah. And you need certain instruments, uh, synthesizers, and you need percussion, congas and shakers and things. So we had not only a drummer, but we had a percussion player as well. And then whatever else was in the band. Everything goes great. We do Thursday, we do the dress rehearsal, it's really good. He's happy, everybody's... Comes his second song on air and one minute, Joe Dixo, we're on stage, we're ready, but the percussion player is not there. And the percussion player starts this song. It starts with this percussion. I think it was Avalon. Is that song Avalon? Sammy Figueroa. He's not there. I'm looking around. I'm like, please let him run in, you know. He's not there. I'm saying, was he upstairs? Was he in the dressing room? Yeah, he was. 30 seconds, we're not stopping, it's live TV. I'm thinking, what am I gonna do? Chris Parker was playing drums. He was the house drummer in our band. He was playing drums. I look around, I see Steve Jordan, the great drummer, producer. He produces the Keith Richards stuff, you know, many other things, John Mayer. Um, I see Steve is in the back. I go, Jordan, I yell, yo, Jordan, come. I know him, you know, come. What? He said, I said, come here. I go, Chris, you play percussion because you know the intro. I said, Steve, sit down. He'll start it, kick it. Bang. That was five seconds when Steve got on stage. Joe Dixon, five seconds. Wow. We did it. <laughs> we hit it. That was great.